Many thanks for joining us for News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Annette Felix. The federal government has closed its case of false and non-declaration of charges uh, preferred against the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onuen, at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. Although the prosecution led by Ali Umar S.A.N., had proposed to call six witnesses to prove its case against the defendant. It closed the case after calling only three of them. Umar announced his decision to close the prosecution's case after the third witness, Ifoma Okebue, an official of Standard Chartered Bank, concluded her testimony on Thursday. Now, State High Court in Yola has ordered the indefinite postponement of the supplementary governorship polls in Adamawa State. Now, the order follows a suit filed by a political party, uh, the Movement for Restoration and Defense of Democracy, MRDD, and its candidate, Eric Seaman, asking the courts to cancel the election on the grounds that the party's logo was not on the ballot paper. Ruling on the case of George Abdulaziz Waziri, Order that the polls should be put on hold until he rules on an application. INEC had fixed March 23rd to hold supplementary elections in the state after the first poll was declared inconclusive because the margin of victory was less than the cancelled votes in the state. Now the case has now been adjourned till Tuesday for ruling. Still on electoral matters, INEC has announced it will resume collation and announcement of results in Rivers State between April 2nd and 5th. INEC's National Commissioner in Charge of Information and Voter Education, Festus Okoye, said this during a press conference at the Commission's headquarters in Abuja. Okoye explained that INEC would conduct supplementary polls when necessary and in some constituencies not affected by litigation. April 13. And now the electoral body also revealed that it would hold an interagency security meeting on March 29, after which guidelines will be issued on the election. It added that the issuance of all outstanding certificates of return will be concluded on April 19. Meanwhile, INEC is insisting that it will not issue a certificate of return to embattled Governor of Ivo State, Rocha Sokorocha, speaking at a press conference. Friends in Abuja, INEC National Commissioner in charge of publicity, Festus Koi, said the authenticity of a Kurdish victory will now be decided by the court. This statement comes hours after the Imo State Governor approached a federal high court, Abuja, asking it to compel INEC to issue him his certificate of return as a senator elect for Imo West Senatorial District. We will not issue certificate of return to Governor Rochas Okorocha in relation to the senatorial election. But as of today, he has taken his matter to the courts. And I think that it will be more prudent and more rational uh, to wait for the outcome of the matter he has filed in court before we make any further comment. When a matter is pending in court, the best thing to do is not to prejudge the matter that is already in court, but to allow the judicial process to run its course. If at the end of the day, the courts make an order that we should give him a certificate of return, of course the commission will obey such a court order. If on the other hand the court gives, makes, uh, takes a different position and uh, makes other consequential orders in relation uh, to the conduct of the elections in Imo West, we will also comply with whatever the courts decide. But as of today, uh, the matter is pending before the courts, and the best thing to do in the circumstances is to wait for the outcome of the judicial process. The federal government has approved the sum of 27.4 billion naira as intervention fund for victims of flood, conflict and insecurity across the nation. Now, this approval was given at the Federal Executive Council meeting at the presidential villa. Briefing State House correspondents after the meeting, Kebi State's Governor Atiku Bagudu, who is also Vice Chairman of the National Food Security Council, noted that 69,872 persons will benefit for the victims, uh, will benefit from over 8 billion naira earmarked for the victims of conflict and insecurity, while 18 billion naira was specifically for flood victims across 14 states. The National Food Security Council set up 
a working committee with National uh, Emergency Management Agency as a secretariat. They, normally, they, have, they, are, they are the custodians of the data system. So for conflict impacted states, which I said there are seven, I think there was unanimous consensus that those are the states that are the most affected by conflict and insecurity. And people living away from their homes or displaced and are living in camps are fairly agreed, they are, fairly, they are quite identifiable and the places where they live. So there is a, the data provided by states was interrogated by the National, Emerg uh, National Emergency Management Agency and the Secretary and Security Agencies. And I believe that we, have, uh, we are compatible with the uh, beneficiary data that we have. The same thing for the uh, flood uh, affected states. Also, data was shared and discussed, interrogated by both states and federal agencies. And we are comfortable. And the means of distribution of this support is by direct support. So we believe if each farmer, there's a data, each, sorry, each beneficiary is identified in already. There's a data. This process has taken over nine months because the president uh, insisted on due process and due, uh, uh, due, uh, uh, due care being exercised to ensure that those who are affected will be uh, the ultimate beneficiaries. President Muhammad Buhari is assuring Nigerians of inclusive and transparent policies that will guarantee security and economic safety of every citizen. Buhari said this while hosting a delegation of the Nigerian Union of Journalists led by Chris Isioguzo at the State House in Abuja. This space is difficult to regulate and police. In many instances, the participants in this medium are not trained or professional journalists. The stories they present are neither factual nor true. However, through the digital platform, they are able to reach millions and create an alternative reality in their minds. I am sure you will all agree that the biggest threat to the sustainability and credibility of your profession is the uncontrolled and unregulated news platforms operating in the cyber space. This is not only in Nigeria, but across the entire globe. Innocent lives have been lost or destroyed due to this fake news phenomena. Many of the perpetrators of these acts do not even live within our shores. However, they have been able to damage the refuge of hard-working Nigerian journalists while at the same time promoting conflict and divisions within our society. In his remarks, the president of the NUJ, Chris Isuguzo, congratulated the president on winning the 2019 presidential polls, attributing the victory to his integrity and commitment to the development of Nigeria. Isuguzo said the nation, the union, was concerned by the growing number of media casualties in Nigeria and across the continent in carrying out their duties, urging federal and state government to take effective measures to protect journalists. We particularly appeal to the federal government and all states of the Federation to take effective measures for better protection of journalists and to fully implement the Declaration of Principles on Freedom of Expression in Africa, which clearly states that no one shall be subject to arbitrary interference with his or her freedom of expression and to cooperate and support the mandate of Special Rapporteur on freedom of expression in the continent and to build synergy with the Union to foster safety of all media professionals. Your Excellency, sir, we, are, we also wish to encourage your administration to evolve better ways of impacting positively on the lives of Nigerians who feel marginalized 
from the mainstream of Nigeria's socioeconomic and political activities. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, is seeking the support of members of the Southern and Middle Belt Elders Forum as he seeks redress in court over the results of the presidential election. Atiku made the appeal during a close door meeting with the forum at the home of elder statesman Edwin Clark in Abuja. While reiterating his commitment to restructuring, Achiko said he was confident that justice will be served and he will retrieve his stolen mandate. In response, chairman of the forum, Edwin Clark, insisted that restructuring is the only guarantee for Nigeria's unity. Edo State Governor Godwin Abasaki and his Niger counterpart uh, Abubakar Bello have been speaking on their plans to ensure growth and development in their respective states. The governors addressing state house correspondents after a meeting in Abuja assured of their commitment to the economy of their states. It's just general issues pertaining to the region, economic development of the region, security, and um, just how we can make uh, economic progress in the next four years? Well, Niger State should be rest assured that um, uh, we're committed to uh, providing dividends of the democracy, we're committed to completing uh, projects we have started. In addition to new ones uh, uh, we want to embark on that will be of benefit to the general public. So um, there's still a long way to go. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, we'll get on it as soon as possible. Tragedy struck in a solar area of Lagos State after a gas explosion caused an inferno which destroyed scores of vehicles and properties in the neighborhood. The fire, which started at about 2 p.m. in a building in Babs and Imashaun, soon spread to surrounding apartments and vehicles, completely destroying them. The casualty figure, if any, is yet to be confirmed by the appropriate authorities. Meanwhile, the fire has been contained by emergency officials who arrived to scene minutes after it started. Well, World Poetry Day is celebrated annually on March 21st to promote the reading, writing, and teaching of poems all over the world. Now, in Nigeria, uh, poets are also celebrating the significance of the day. A celebrated poet, Akan Udofia, says that all humans are bound together by shared experiences which are expressed through poetry. But the art is catching on rather slowly in the country. It's going gradually, but we still have a long way to go because most of this event organized by um, institutions and individuals, these poetry events, you, the turnout is not encouraging. They're like most of the people that go there are just are mostly writers and people that are in industries. But people from the outside, they don't really embrace that um, aspect of poetry. And even within, within the institution itself, there are not much organization that are supporting poets. In Nigeria, or compared to what you talk of the music, the entertainment industry, you know, like the music and comedy, when there's comedy shows, you see the whole place is full and all that. But when there's a poetry event, probably you just see a turn up of about 30 people there. And you'll be wondering uh, what, what happened. Funny enough, everyone, every one of us have a bit of poetry in us. We have poetry in us. We might not know that, but we do. You're still watching news now on TV 360 Nigeria. We'll be right back after this break. Do stay with us.
us for the business side of the news is Fidelia Aguncha. Hello, Fidelia. Hi, Annette. So there's been a lot of momo among uh, Nigerian workers, uh, and this is uh, despite the fact that the uh, new national minimum wage was just recently approved by the Senate. So, so tell us, why is that? Well, the federal government's plan to increase value-added tax did not get a warm reception from Nigerians who are criticizing the move. The Minister of Budget and National Planning, Udo Udoma, had hinted that the federal government is likely to improve, increase value-added tax to able to fund the new national minimum wage. Experts are arguing that an increase in the value-added tax would have negative effects on the citizens and the Nigerian economy at large. Adeshima Odushaga has that story. The excitement triggered by the Senate's approval of 30,000 Naira new minimum wages was cut short when the Minister of Budget and National Planning, Udo Udoma, revealed that it might come with an increase in the value added tax. This, as said, would enable the federal government to fund the payment of the newly approved bill. The implication of this is a direct increase in food prices, which will eventually fall back on the common man who is preparing for an increase in the salary as well as business owners in the country. By the time government increases the VAT, the prices will, uh, the, the, the manufacturers or private sector will increase the prices of their own products. In addition, there will be VAT that will be increased because the VAT is not for the private sector. It's not for the manufacturers, it's for the government. But because private sector also needs to increase the salaries, paying the minimum wage, they will now have to increase prices of their goods. Let us look at what that scenario, what can come out of it? Chaos. Chaos. The proposal to increase VAT will further impose new challenges for businesses. Because already uh, the operating environment is a very difficult one in terms of cost. The production uh, environment is also very difficult. Uh, many businesses are grappling now with issues of survival and sustainability. And because of the way we administer VAT in this environment, it does not exempt any component of the value chain. In Nigeria, tax is one of government's primary source of revenue. But analysts say government may have to seek other sources in cases where taxes become a burden on the payers. When you look at our legislators, you know how much they earn every month? Why can't we, you know, even if they have to work part-time, we don't need them there full-time basis. If they have to work part-time, let us have some money away from there. Put that aside. Look at all the perquisite of office we give to government workers. We can do away with that and let that money be put aside to meet the minimum wage. We need to stimulate investment because you get revenue from investors. And it's only investors that are making profit that you pay tax. So we need to create the environment where the level of investment in the economy will grow. As the level of investment grows, the GDP will grow, profits will grow, and tax revenue will also increase. Nigeria is believed to be the country with the lowest rate of value-added tax at 5% in West Africa. But could this be another reason for the increase? No, not necessarily because other countries uh, are paying a much bigger, higher VAT. It is what the environment deserves. Perhaps in some of these other countries, the government is providing much more, both for citizens and for businesses, than what the government here is providing. If as a citizen, you are paying so much for school fees, where in some other countries, you don't pay anything, you have free education. When Nigeria compares itself to West Africa, it's a shame that anybody can be saying that. What is the population of most of these countries in West Africa? 
how much is their revenue compared to that of what government gets through taxpayers here. Value added tax is the amount by which the cost of product or service has been increased at each stage of its production or distribution. If the Senate approves the proposal, VAT will rise from the current 5% to between 6.75% and 7.25%, which is likely to translate to a hike in inflation and increased cost of living. Adisha Wadushoga, TV360, Nigeria. Meanwhile, the Federal Inland Revenue Service has denied reports that plans to increase value-added tax by 50% to meet off payment of the newly proposed minimum wage. Wahab Badamosi, the head communication and Sevicom department of the FIRS, said this in a statement released by the service. The Tax Administration Agency was reacting to reports that its chairman, Babatunde Fowler, had proposed that VAT be increased to 50%. Badamasi explained that Fowler had called for an increase in the number of Nigerians and companies paying VAT and not a 50% increase in VAT rate as reported. Oil ease from 2019 highs reached earlier in Thursday's session, but market remained relatively tight amid supply cuts led by producer club OPEC and U.S. government sanctions on Iran and Venezuela. U.S. crude futures were at $60.11 a barrel, down by 12 cents, while Brent crude oil futures were at $68.54 a barrel. Crude prices have been pushed up by almost a third since the start of 2019 by supply cuts led by the organization of the petroleum exporting countries OPEC, as well as sanctions, by, sanctions enacted against Iran and Venezuela by the United States. And up next is a review of the stock market. Stay tuned. Bearish sentiments continue to dominate the Nigeria Stock Exchange as the market further declined by 0.50%, which is the fourth day of loss since the start of trading this week. Increased profit taking and selling pressure has dragged the value of the market down by more than 90 billion naira in the past four days, with the market capitalization closing at 11.517 trillion naira. Now, largely responsible for this downtrend is the oil and gas sector, which is falling by 3.28%. And this fall is influenced uh, by the sharp drop in global oil prices. On this backdrop, it is not surprising that Seplet is the biggest loser on the market today as its value drops by more than 30 naira. Second on the chart is Dangote Cement right here, which is falling despite a rise in the industrial goods index. Now, the banking sector also closed in the red, declining by 0.35%, and the effect can be seen on this chart as Guarantee Trust Bank and Stambic IBTC takes the third and fourth spot, respectively. Let's now move to the flip side, and that's the gainer's chart. We can see that Cement Company of Northern Nigeria is the biggest gainer on the floor of the market today, which is not surprising, as Industrial Goods Index posted the largest gain sectorally. Third on the chart right here is Eterna Oil, which managed to stay above water, unlike Seplet, appreciating by four cover. Well, let's now look at the top traders chart, we can see that Access Bank leads the pack with over 93 million shares traded. Now, this follows the full suspension on the shares of Diamond Bank as it officially merged with Access Bank PLC. Let's now take a look at the global scene. That's the global market. Now, we can see that pressure on the pounds continue to rise as its value further drops on the back of uncertainty surrounding UK's Brexit deal. Well, this, however, did not affect investors' confidence as the FTSE is seen rising by 0.88%. Also rising is the Dow Jones, this time by 0.70%. Now, these two markets were in the red yesterday, but they seem to have overturned the loss seen in the previous days. Well, that is from the world of business. It's back to Annette Felix. Thanks for that business update, Fidelia. We'll now turn to know uh, what's uh, the latest in the foreign scene and in sports after this. Corruption not in my country.
Daddy, my business has been going down. I need your help. Bawa Hala, eh? I will show you the formula. Eh? I use some body chemical which I mix to so produce the drugs which gives me up to four times profit. Imagine, pa. So you are one of the people that is killing millions and millions of Nigerians in this country. That lady, was it not you last two months that was complaining about the fuel scarcity in this country, that the government is corrupt? Have I killed anybody in your family? You don't have to kill any of my family members directly. Every Nigerian you kill is my family. Selling of fake drugs, expired drugs, putting drugs in the wrong packet, all that are acts of corruption. This is corruption, not in my country. CIA. Me? Fake drug? Now corruption? Allah kia. Corruption not in my country. Stop corruption now. At least 12 people were killed on Thursday after a gas tank exploded at an Egyptian fertilizer factory on the Red Sea coast. No, the state authority is yet to officially confirm the incident and casualty figure. Medical sources say 10 bodies have been deposited at a nearby morgue. Meanwhile, Egypt's official news agency, MENA, says a total of 15 have been killed and wounded in the explosion. The cause of the fire is however yet to be ascertained. The European Union says it will only agree to a short delay to Brexit if members of parliament approve the current withdrawal agreement next week. EU Council President Donald Tusk said an extension requested by the Prime Minister was possible. May has written to Tusk requesting a Brexit delay to 30th of June, saying she needed more time to get her deal agreed by MPs and passed into law. The Prime Minister will be making a statement from Downing Street later today, and Tuck said he believes all 27 of the EU members who must sign off on the extension would agree, but he depended on a positive vote in the House of Commons. In sports, the Super Eagles of Nigeria have expressed their readiness for their final 2019 African Cup of Nations qualifying match against Seychelles in Asaba, Delta State. And at Raw's men host the Pirates at the Stephen Keshi Stadium in a dead rubber game, having booked their place in the continental showpiece while their visitors have been eliminated. Ahead of Friday's encounter, the players were put through their paces and training to prepare them adequately for the tie as they look to end the qualifying campaign on a high. The three-time African champions are leading Group E with a qualification ticket in the bag. Our Juventus star man Cristiano Ronaldo has avoided a Champions League suspension after UEFA announced his punishment for the celebration in the aftermath of the club's win over Atletico Madrid. Ronaldo scored a hat-trick in the second leg of Juve's last 16 clash with the Rogi Blancos and celebrated by mocking Diego Simone's own celebration from the first leg which Atletico had won with a two-goal margin. UEFA opened disciplinary proceedings against Ronaldo on Monday for the gesture and have decided a $20,000 uh, fine is punishment enough for the Portugal International. Ronaldo, therefore, will be free to face Ajax in the quarterfinal of the competition as he continues his quest to win a fourth straight Champions League title and a sixth overall. And that's it on News Now at this time. Thanks for watching and bye for now. Thank you.